G'day traders, today we're going to talk about what we can learn from the turtle traders for our 50 pips a day simple forex trading system. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Been a big week so far, we've had some great moves on the pound crosses. We've had some fantastic opportunities in each one of the sessions talking about our simple 50 pips a day forex trading system. Today we're going to talk a little bit about what we can learn from the turtle traders and a quote that Richard Dennis said. He said, I could put the rules to our trading system in the newspaper and most people still wouldn't follow them. And one of the things that we focus on, that I focus on, is to try and keep things as simple as possible in everything that I do. Trading is one of those challenges that there's so much conflicting information. There's so many different ways to approach the market, indicators, fundamentals, timings, all these different things. But it's really important for you as a retail trader, especially if you're juggling other, other things, full-time jobs, whatever that may be, to have a very simple model that you can duplicate, but also scale as your results support doing that. And one of the things that was really important about the turtle system was that they had every part of their trading system defined. So they had their entry, their exit, their risk management, their ways to pyramid into trades to pile into winning positions, very strict uh, method for cutting their trades and exiting their trades when they were wrong. But one of the things that they talked about was that some of the turtles even though they had all had the same rules, some of the turtles just never really found success and were able to continue as successfully as some of the others. And Jerry Parker, who runs Chesapeake Capital, made a comment in one of his interviews saying that the first few weeks he had been following the system, Richard Dennis came up to him and he said, how's it going, Jerry? And Jerry said, well, it's okay, you know, I've I've missed a few trades, I've hit a few trades, I haven't done, done, you know, I've missed some big trades that took off and, and Richard Dennis said to him, he said, Jerry, it's okay, just stick to the plan and follow the rules. Don't worry if they're winners or losers, just hit the trades when your system says that there's a trade signal, cut your losses and just follow the plan. And of course, Jerry Parker went on to become very, very successful. So one of the things I really want to emphasize, and I keep going over the basics, and really sort of want to hit home about your approach, your mental mindset towards your trading, is that if you focus on the process and not the outcome, that's when you'll get the results that you're after. When we focus on the outcome instead of the process, we usually end up engaging in behavior, uh, impulsive, irrational, you know, over leveraging, over trading, taking on too much risk, moving stops, not using stops, just little things that will end up sabotaging all the good things that you do when you follow your process. So it's really critical to be process oriented as opposed to outcome oriented. So again, we just review the three things that markets do. They break out and they trend. They break out, and they pull back and they reverse. That's a false break and they break out and they pull back and they go into a trading range. When we talk about the 12 candle window for Asia being 8 to 11 p.m., 2 to 5 a.m. London, and 8 to 11 a.m. for New York, that's New York Eastern Standard Time and that's using our 15 minute charts. Everything in the beginning should be really simple because then you can really start to just focus on some simple setups and coming back to what the turtles did. So one of their methods was that they would trade the breakout of a new 20 day high when it broke or as it broke the 20 day high. And they would do the same for short positions with a 20 day low. And their initial stop loss would be two ATR. So if you think about it, Richard Dennis was really big on taking a lot of trades when the signals present, knowing that a lot of them would be losers and he was willing to take a lot of small losses because he knew that when these markets did break out and trend, 
that three or four of those markets would make up all of the losses plus make all of their profits because they would pyramid into those winning trades. So again, just being purely process oriented and hitting the trades. Now, Peter Brandt, who you've heard me talk about before, and if you want to read Peter's books, they're in the link below. I recommend getting Peter's 21 Weeks of Commodity Trading book and his Charting Classics book because he's probably the purest a classical chartist, which is very similar to the turtle model. Peter trades breakouts of larger geometric patterns compiled over weekly time frames. And again, he knows a lot of his trades are going to be losers. And he'll tell you that three or four of his trades normally make up the bulk of all his profits for the year. And he looks at maybe taking one to two trades a month that are really, really good trades. So he may on average have a trade a week, really good trade, but he may only have one or two that are really good trades that end up moving each month. And that's a really powerful thing to think about. So we talk about 50 pips a day, but it's really important to be able to identify the best trading setups that match our criteria. So if we come back and we talk about these three things, and we talk about our simple system. We're gonna come back to this in a second. We talk about structure, so big picture. We could have a rectangle over, the, over a few days. We could have an ascending triangle. We could have a descending triangle, a double top, double bottom, maybe a head and shoulders that builds up over three or four days. So we look at structure because that gives us a bigger geometrical pattern for where the market may be range bound and eventually break out, similar to the turtle model. And instead of targeting the 50 pips, we may have a profit target of maybe 150 or 250 pips. And again, if we look at this model with the turtles, we're trading a very similar model except that we trade in both directions. We know that a lot of breakouts our stop hunts and we know that they fail and they come back to the other side as we saw yesterday some of them can become measured moves and it's a very similar model we have a one bar stop or one ATR whatever you want to call it one bar you know our risk is up here and our profit target is here maybe here and so again sticking to a very simple model when the markets get into that 12 candle window, okay? We're looking at the high of the day and the low of the day. Now, this is really important because when we come to the screen, if the market in Asia has already broken out and come back, we wanna be looking at that market and asking ourselves, is this market in a trending situation where it's broken out and come back? Or is this market in a situation where we're hitting stops and in a range bound market or are we in a stop hunt to a high for a possible reversal in the other direction bigger picture first thing we can be aware of is has the market triggered a previous daily high or low because we may be in a market that's trending already and that's important because the market can break out pull back hit the stops again in London and pull back but not go anywhere and consolidate and continue that trend in the US session or maybe London depending on how that's set up but again we talked about setting alerts or just visually identifying a market that's broken a previous day's high or low very important then we talk about coming to the screen during our 12 candle window knowing that that first hour in a lot of cases can be the stop hunt and the trap all wrapped in one or we can get a trap then a stop hunt then the trade so we might in that first hour have a, a market that's going down and it takes traders further before stop hunting back into the trend and then continuing the trend in the next hour in that 12 candle window a lot of those trades will come off of numbers so in a lot of cases even whatever time frame it doesn't matter it can be daily can be four hour can be 15 minute a lot of these highs and lows will be working around numbers round numbers so again we talked about once you've seen the stop hunt not not getting caught into all the price whipping around and the flashing numbers paying attention to the clock we talked about the hourly rotation so 
That stop hunt may be in the third, fourth candle of the hour. It engulfs and shifts and goes sideways for one or two candles maybe at the numbers or just below or above the numbers. Then you can fight for a better fill. If you need to take that, or that original trade entry candle, that's okay. You put your stop in. If you, have, if you have time and the market has consolidated just prior to the opening of London or New York, and you've got a chance to get a five or six pip or 10 pip better fill, that's the opportunity to do so. Risk reward, price action. So when we get our signal, whether we're trading with a trend trade back, you know, the market pulls back and goes and gives us a trend or we're trading the, the breakout pullback, the market, we want to know what's, what's our potential profit target. Is it a 25 pip box, but we're on level three for a big move down or a big move up? Or is it a sideways market and it's very tight and low range like Memorial Day and it's a 25 pip box? We're expecting the 50 pip move, but it goes sideways at the bottom or the top of the box. You need to be prepared to take money off the table or go to break even. All the, the things that you want to be thinking of as time goes on, because if that market hasn't hit your profit target in three hours, chances are that move is over and they're possibly going to reconsolidate inside of that high and low. Just focus on execution. If you're having trouble doing that or if you're finding you're a bit uh, nervy or you can't hit the, hit the trade, keep it simple. If you're trading too big, bring back your size. If you're, not, if you're trading on demo, just focus on perfectly executing the trade setup. And I talk about really paying attention to the clock. As each hour goes around, you have to be thinking if you're not, if you haven't hit the high or the low or if they've done a stop hunt in that first hour and there's a pullback or a breakout, be thinking the hourly rotation. If it's not at the end of the first hour, going into the London, the, the London open, it may be at the end of the London hour going into the third hour for the trade. In, you know, if the first hour isn't, isn't setting up, the second hour at the end of the second hour most likely is when that trade is going to set up. If they've already moved the market, then potentially we're in a three hour setup for a reversal off or a consolidation at the bottom or top of that range after the third hour. So it could be a fourth hour trade setup. Again, outside of our 12 candle window, but that means that the original move started in the first hour. Just something to think about, the hourly rotation. So, so again, few really big winners, okay? We're, we have 50 pips a day in the market, so focus on process. If it's not really simple, step back and look what's happening. Am I in a market that's breaking to new highs and pulling back? Okay, they could be trapping volume short and consolidating it for the eventual, eventual move long later in the US session. Or are they breaking back? Are they trapping people down low uh, for a false break reversal for a double bottom? Are they squeezing people into the bottom and not going anywhere or up high and, and the market's not moving for the big push back down? Little things that, as we look at the bigger picture, previous days highs and lows, you know, the turtles again, keeping it simple, 20 day highs and lows. Well, if we break a previous day's high or low, especially early in Asia, and the market has only pulled back 25 pips, chances are they're going to hit it again. And eventually they may hit it again for a breakout continuation and a trend trade. If we have a market that's a big ranging consolidation and the market breaks out, consolidates in Asia, and then they eventually break out, we wait for the market to hit the, high, the, the high or the low. We don't know which way they're going to go, but when they go there, we wanna know do they go into consolidation with three pushes? Is there a, a breakout pullback and a continuation? Little things that can tip us to just keeping it simple, traders. Simple entry and exit. What can we learn from the turtle traders? Okay, keep your risk tight, be willing to just Keep developing your expertise, focusing on process every single day. Master the 12 candle window and the results will follow. Have a great trading session. Keep it simple, keep getting better, and may the markets go with you. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. 
If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.